Rodan versus Uther. <laughs> All right, game three against Das Klumpenthal. I'm Das Klumpenthal, yeah. Uh, wow. So this hand is just far too high end, especially without a coin. So we gotta mulligan we'll everything. Much better. So again, I'm going to risk the Blood Imp on one, because I have two. Alright, so he definitely doesn't have Bomber, he would have played it there. Um, now he's likely to coin, well I shouldn't say likely, he could coin out of three. But if he doesn't, then the loot hoarder is better against the two drop. So we'll play him instead of the engineer. Since a three two drop would still die to it. Oh, good. So either he just drew terribly, which is possible. He mulliganed everything, it looked like. Or he's setting up for a, uh, what's it called? Consecrate. Um, I think if we're going to plan for a Consecrate, then the Golem is probably better, since it would not die outright. Neither would the Crusader, but the Crusader would lose her Divine Shield. It's usually better spent doing damage to a minion. That's fine. And then we'll kill this. Reporting for duty. He likes his one ones. Can't completely blame him for doing. So probably engineer and life tap, but we'll play engineer first, see what we draw. I hope you like my invention. All right. All right. We're gonna use the two four to kill that, so that we can keep our other guy alive. Hey, we did damage to him. <laughs> so I, I mean, consecrate here would not actually be very valuable. So I'm not sure what he's saving up for exactly, since he would get. One for one, this would be the only actual card that dies because this would give us a card and refund. Wow, he's he's heavy into those one ones. Okay. Um I should probably just go full aggro. Which means brewmaster this back. Use that to kill that and flame up. The Flame Imp will be a 3-3 three, three because of the Blood Imp. Oh, actually I should attack this, that first. And then Brewmaster. So this is a pretty scary board. Uh, I guess the other thing that he could be setting up for, which I didn't consider in time, is an Equality Consecrate. And that must be what's happening right now. North oh no, it's not. Because <laughs> it costs six mana to do all the end cuts. I, th I thought I was doomed. All right. Well, good. Um, so I think we'll use the two one to kill that, which is still a one for one since this guy will give us a card back. And then six mana. Probably play the Priestess, and then next turn we can do the 5 and a 2. Or a 3, 2, and a 2. Yeah, that'll be good. So let's see what we draw first. Okay. Uh, it wouldn't be terrible to Engineer and then Brewmaster it immediately. Actually, 
Why don't I do that? That's ultra greedy, but you know. <laughs> Win in room. Another round. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, that must have been a rage quit. I can't. <laughs> I mean, he had so many cards in his hand. Uh, that was glorious. So there was a good example of what the early game, you know, the, the the reason we built the deck as it was sort of shaping up with this early game stuff. Uh, why that's so powerful is when you draw the right cards, you have a good mana curve, and you use things well. And again, man, we get a lot of value in the Brewmasters. That would that was two extra cards from their battle cry. So, in essence, in combination with the engineers, the brewmasters were effectively free. They they were like draw a card back kind of cards, which is awesome. Gul'dan versus Thrall. All right, game four against Zesiru. Zesiru. Shaman. So again, we don't have a coin, so we'll drop this. I will keep the two and the three, because I don't want to, even though I have a lot of ones, I don't want to risk getting a ton of high-end stuff. All right. So this doesn't look like an aggressive draw. This looks like a pretty typical one for a normal control deck. Greetings, friend. So the hope is our opponent doesn't coin something. Okay, good. So we play Engineer, hopefully draw one. All right, that's pretty good. Well, actually, one doesn't matter since we have a three. Come on, get a one-one. Oh, he did. Oh, that's so good. That was the best totem for us to go against since we can kill it with our one-two. So I will play the Crusader. Since I can't play two minions otherwise, I could play the Blood Imp and tap. I could also mortal coil that, but that's not important right now. And this survives the a theoretical uh, fork lightning. And the next turn we have. Ooh, Urshak is so good against that card. I mean, it's one for one, but it's just. It's in a really efficient way to do it. So now he'll get a 2 2 totem. Oh! That's going to be a real pain since we don't have any oozes in the deck. Yikes. And we didn't draw anything to play. So I will tap and play a Blood Imp by himself. Which is normally dangerous, but I don't know if he has a bomber. Hopefully not. And then next turn we venture co almost certainly, blessed. unless he plays something to Shadow Bolt, which that's probably that. Jesus, mortal coils everywhere. Well, I don't, I don't want to spend two mortal coils to kill that. Even though that would be a one for one, I would have three mana left. So I'm going to tap and then plan to shadow bolt, unless I get something awful. Okay, well, that's pretty good. We can play that with Mortal Coils and go crazy. But I'm a little worried about my lack of board presence. What's he got here? Fire Elemental. That's actually good for us. Usually you want a Fire Elemental to kill something. Uh, the downside is that... So I could siphon soul or ventrico. Ventrico dies to that is the problem. And it would float a mana. I wonder. But if he plays a crazy minion later, I might be in trouble. 
Psycho Soul is my only removal. Eh, that's alright. My hand is very awkward. I got all my mortal coils, which is not great. Cobra is pretty good. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Oh man. So if I had eight mana, I would Stormwind, make this a two-two, send it in, and then Mortal Coil to finish it. Even though my Blood Imp would die, it would be a one-for-one one tree. I but wonder. without it, I don't have anything to do. I guess I could. I mean, that's crazy. I could auctioneer, attack, double mortal coil. I wonder. That seems ridiculous, though. If I tap, I'll be at five, and I venture go, but then that just dies to that. God, I don't want cards. I want stuff on the board. I'm going to tap and try to get something better. <laughs> That's not better. Alright, I got a sack of Ventrico. I don't have any way to... Nothing else to play. So it's a really good trade for him. That was exactly what I was worried about. And he's got it. Oh no. That's really bad news. Oh Jesus. Um. Alright, I think I have Hunter and Argus try to buy myself some time. Mess with us. My shield for Argus! The only good news is that these require this guy to kill with what he has on the board. They have enough health to warrant extra damage somewhere. But that's about the only good news. And I have a Cult Master. If he can't kill a lot of my stuff... I may be able to get some good returns on my investments. <laughs> so... I will have a 1-1 one, one, and a 3-4 left over, it looks like. And his dude has 6. So actually, I could Stormwind, and both my guys could then kill his big guy. Oh, he didn't... What? Why didn't he attack into this? I don't understand. I s like seriously, I don't. What? Hmm. What? Hmm. All right. This is a really important turn. As much as I would love to get returns for with the Cult Master, I think I have to play it smarter and get more stuff on the stronger stuff on the board. So I play this five, six, seven, that's not enough. So, so I have to trade all this. Alright, 
Well, that was a bit of a panic. I was running out of time. Um, but essentially, with the auctioneer there, my mortal coils didn't lose me a card. And I got one extra back since one of the mortal coils actually killed the guy. So it's a pretty good shock, but we already got good value out of him. <laughs> it's time for a little blood. So I kind of wish I had a hellfire. In fact, I really wish I had a hellfire. <sighs> Bloodlust could be devastating here. So I have to really think about this. Um, I don't have any taunts. So he has two, four, five, six, seven. Seven damage on board. Bloodlust would be uh, six, eighteen more. So that's plenty. So I really need to kill as much as possible. So I'll kill that. I wonder. Blood imp after blood imping into that. Mortal coil that. So I'm gonna mortal coil first. Okay, blood imp. That into there. That into there. Silence that. Mm. Yeah. So, again, as much as I would normally loathe to reveal my blood imp that early, with the stuff on his board that can clearly kill it, if if he had bloodlust in hand, I would have been dead. Pay attention, class. So, he, uh, I don't know if he did anyway, actually. Three plus nine. No, he wouldn't have been able to kill me yet, but it would have been close. All right. So I have to, again, clear as much as possible. Luckily, I can clear, kill most of the stuff that's dangerous. If I Stormwind... This can kill that and survive. This can kill that and survive. This can kill that and survive. Or actually, I should kill the imp thing, probably. This can kill that and die. So I should... Nah, I can't draw anything useful. I played all my one-cost spells. So I'm going to silence this... Alright, so let's see, that kills that, Another round. that kills that, kills that, kills that. I decided not to uh, have a blood imp die there. All right, so bloodless still does not kill me with what he has on board, so we're still okay for now. Uh, looks like it wasn't bloodlust. He played everything, so that's good. All right, I think I'm okay-ish. I can play another Stormwind, which is really good. I can't clear the board, but I can come really close. Basically leave this healing totem active. So many possibilities. All right, so let's play the engineer, just in case. 
Nope. All right, and then another storm wind. Okay, so we have to do five to that. I don't see a good way. Well, oh, this guy can stay alive. Actually. And something has to die to this. We might as well have it be the four three. So the six two that four three dies. Another round. Doesn't matter at this point. Okay. That's it. We're good. So his top deck would have to be incredible. Actually, I should have looked if I could have won, could have won there. I might have been able to. Well, no, I don't think I would, because there was two taunts out. Alright, what do you got? 7, 14. Uh, 17. Plus 11. Yeah, that's exactly how much we need. Let me double check. 7, 10. 22. What? <laughs> yeah, that's right. 10, 22, 28. All right. Well, that game had a pretty crazy start. Like <laughs> that opening draw was just. I don't know. Um. Yeah, that was bizarre. I mean, three mortal coils in hand. I mean, I think the big turning point was really the decision to siphon soul that fire elemental. Because the other option at the time was to venture co, which, based on what we now know he had in his hand, he didn't have any removals, he didn't have any hexes. So. He may not have traded to us, he may have done six damage to us, but at least we could have used our venture code to kill his fire elemental. And then the siphon soul would have been able to kill the earth elemental, which was you know, the main problem there. Anyway, game five, I believe, against Tommy Gun, a rogue. So we're going to drop pretty much all the stuff except two. Try to get some of those one drops, especially the blood imp. It's really useful against the rogue. Well, no blood imp, but it's a really good hand otherwise. Alright. So, I think the best play is to flame imp right now and then coin the golem next turn, most likely. Uh, well, actually, is that... That's not really true. Hmm. Still flame up here, but I don't know if I'll go on next turn. Because if I do, I wouldn't have anything to play on three. But we'll see what he plays and or what we draw. Get in there and fight, maggot. The sergeant's quite good against that. Ah, but Blood Imp is better. So now that we drew Blood Imp, we should coin so we can play this plus a two. So, arguably the best two is the Engineer over the Loot Hoarder, since it will survive this with the Blood Imp buff. So we're going to play her first just to see what we draw, but I can't imagine anything better. <laughs> Another Blood Imp. Well, that's fine. So we want to play this in the middle, and no point in attacking in, he will attack into us if he wants to kill it. The only way not attacking this is worse is if he buffs it with a Shattered Sun Cleric and then kills that. But now he's not even going to bar. Alright. So we have a few things we can do here. But probably the best is to Blood Imp again and then this can kill that without dying and this can kill that. This wouldn't die. Or actually, Mortal Coil. I'd rather have this at a 1-1 one, a one, one, and float 1 mana, is the question. Yeah, 
Yeah, this being at 1 1 is fine because this is going to be at 1 health as well. And if he wants to kill something with his dagger, he's going to kill this. Although, Phantom Knives would be insanely strong there. But I think that's okay. So, we'll plan on him not doing that, hopefully. And. Positioning doesn't. Oh, wait, I forgot I'll get another health. So, this is not a way to win. So, that's fine. So Phantom Knight is not, not very strong. I keep forgetting that the blood and buff stacks, you know. So a lot of punies, but pretty threatening board, all things considered. Or maybe not threatening is the right word, but... I'm going to keep drawing stuff. Okay. So probably... Um, yeah, send the 3-1 into that, Mortal Coil, the 2-1 that pops out, and then most likely Golem ourselves. So, we will see what the draw is first. Okay, that could come in handy. Still far too early to reveal our Blood Imps and attack with him. Auctioneer. All right, well, that's good for us. He pretty much has to give that up. He doesn't have any other play. So we could power overwhelming, and this could kill it. Or we can just use these two. This will die, but draw the card back, and this will survive. I wonder. And I'm leaning towards... Attacking with these two and saving the power as a finisher or a combination with our own auctioneer later on. And then probably play the Crusader and the Engineer. So we'll see what we draw first. Oh, eh, I think I'll play that instead. So I'm going to play it on the outside in case of betrayal. Wow. That's the second person that's pretty much left <laughs> like well before the game was actually over that's pretty good I guess that's the power of these uh, draw cards you don't you don't get a lot of this early game stuff very often in arena I'll take it I do understand being very demoralized when your opponent just has everything going for them. 